The 2017 Honda Civic Si has improved in about every way. But without an eight grand Redline and VTEC, can it really be as fun as the old one? Let's find out. generation Civic Si has a completely different look from the 8th gen that I own myself. Up front, we're met with a more bulging hood. It's longer, it's definitely more upright, whereas the old Civic Si was kind of pointy. While also giving it a better pedestrian safety rating, the front end shape in this generation Civic Si causes there to be less profanity when doing any maintenance as you can reach things with more ease than in the old SI. The black grille and partially fake vents come standard along with the fog lights on the SI. In the wheel department, we have 18 inch alloys. Uh, directional, unfortunately, I just, I don't like directional rims because then you rotate them and then they're backwards. But um, they still look decent. Now, when we come along to the side, the Civic itself is just a good looking car and here it still looks good. The Mazda 3 is more sleek than this, um, but at least here we have some sharp lines uh, and its proportions are pretty balanced overall. Uh, unlike the kind of hunchback look that you get out of, of uh, some of the newer hatchback models that are coming out. You can tell something is up by the low profile tires, reworked fenders and whatnot. And the rear end ties up this vibe with a subtle but nice spoiler. Um, I loved it in the old SI. And I like it here too, it's functional, um, kind of, I guess, because it's front wheel drive, so whatever, that's a different debate. Down at the bottom, you do have an exhaust pipe that looks like it's a one big center, but it's not, there's uh, two tailpipes in there. Either way, respect to Honda for not going with the fake chrome vent looking thing. Um, I like it, except then they did this shit. And it's like, come on, man. But fake vents, it's whatever. It's 2019, you gotta get used to it. This is 2017. The tail lights are kind of special on the SI Coupe. Which features a wraparound design that looks neat. The tail lights on the sedan also look very fitting for the car and even resemble a big C, which is a nice touch. I also think that the flat top to the rear quarter panels make for a wider and more mean look. Overall, I think the exterior of the SI is executed well and Honda didn't slouch on the interior either. They finally got rid of the two-tier gauge cluster, which was cool when it came out, but eventually became too busy. The new look is much more clean. We just get a uh, digital screen for about everything. The interior itself is about what you'd expect out of a small car, nothing, nothing really extra. The only thing that I noticed that really caught my eye are these huge cup holders. This is a whole can of glass cleaner and you can't even see it when it's in the cup holder. Other things that I should note is the lack of really soft touch on your, on your knees. Um, you do get soft touch on both of your elbows, but the one on the door isn't really that soft because your elbow is gonna be resting on the edge. So could be a lot better. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are standard. You have a seven inch infotainment screen here. Uh, and on the SI model, which is basically an EXT, you do get a 10 speaker um, premium Honda audio system with a subwoofer. Ridiculous cup holders aside, the Civic interior doesn't stand out in terms of material quality and overall look. It certainly isn't bottom of the class. I'd put it above the 2017 Veloster Turbo in most regards, but the new Veloster, Mazda 3, Corolla have all improved immensely, making the Civic feel average in the class. The Honda Link system found in this 2017 model is not the greatest infotainment system of its time. I found it to be a little slow to respond, which gets frustrating while driving, and the lack of a volume knob is also a small nuisance. But Honda has put that back in the new car, so I think people have already bitched enough about that. 
Other features that you get in the Civic Si include uh, heated mirrors, heated seats, and a uh, parking brake that is electronic, as, which, uh, eh, eh. As far as seats go, I want to say that they are more heavy, heavily bolstered on the seat bottom than the old Civic Si, um, but they, they grip you, they grip you pretty nice. It's a gentle hug around, around your torso, and the thighs are the same. For spirited driving, it'll work fine. For day-to-day -day commutes, it shouldn't hurt most people. Now, just a quick demonstration of the seating space. I'll get out of the front seat where I was pretty comfortable, get into the back. The new Civic does pretty well. Uh, you get headroom, which is impressive since I'm 6'3". You don't really get, I mean, an abundant amount of knee room, but again, someone my size shouldn't be sitting in the back seat that often. You don't get soft touch, really. I mean, it's like cloth, but it's not really soft where your elbows are going to rest. You don't get rear vents for uh, the AC and heating. Um, so you're, you're really left with not much back here other than a map pocket and a center armrest. So we'll move to the back. The Civic Si has 14.7 cubic feet, which is enough to fit me. And it's most likely enough space for a weekend trip for four. But anyway, if you made it this far in the review, then you probably don't give a shit about the trunk. You just want to hear how it drives. and. That's where the SI shines. Well, for the most part. Now that I've driven this car for a little bit, I can come out and just tell you this car has come a long way from its eighth generation self. Now, that car, which I own, um, is by no means a, a bad car, but it, it's completely different, and I want to get into why. So before I can tell you why, let me give you a brief background. The 8th Gen Civic Si came out for the 2006 model year as a coupe, with a sedan following a year later. They were powered by the K20 2.0-liter naturally aspirated engine that made 197 horsepower at 7800 RPM. And it could spin up to 8300 RPM if you chose to be risky and ignore the 8K redline. While that was all fine and dandy, it made only 139 pound-feet of torque at a very high 6100 RPM forcing you to keep the engine speed up, but I'm not really complaining. The next model was the 9th gen, and that had a K24 engine in it. People were a little upset when that came out, just because it only revved to 7,000 RPM. Sorry, just 7,000. While it made similar power numbers to the old 2 liter, it made 35 more pound-feet of torque, and this new generation became even more controversial with its powertrain because it did away with VTEC altogether and made its peak power of 205 horsepower at just a modest 5700 RPM. So a lot more reasonable, you get there quicker, and the ride there is also complemented by 192 pound-feet of torque. So you're looking at 53 pound-feet more torque than my Civic, and it weighs less. And it makes that torque all the way up to 5,000 RPM, and then that power is there too. So that means it has more practical power. And this is something that Volkswagen has done with the GTI for a while. Uh, it is something that Hyundai continues to do with their Veloster Turbo, um, and Volkswagen's new Jetta GLI that just came out. But regardless of power and torque characteristics, the Civic Si is kept with around 200 horsepower for about 14 model years now. And that's because they figured out that the Civic doesn't really need any more power to be fun. It just needs to handle great and offer an engaging experience. And the six-speed manual does a decent job of the latter. It's definitely one of the better shifters that I've felt in any new car. The shifts are short, crisp, it goes into gear, no, no issues there, it doesn't fuss about it. I do wish there was a little bit more of a mechanical feeling, like don't get me wrong, it's not rubbery, it's good, but I've experienced better from Honda. That's all. Now, the clutch. Very light, springy. The pedal still has some feedback in it, and it doesn't bite abruptly like the WRX does, making this an easy car to learn on and drive quickly. It's a good balance between daily drivability and weekend fun. 
As far as comfort goes, this 10th gen is leaps ahead of my 8th gen. Also, it's more forgiving than a WRX, but falls short of the premium GTI. The seats are supportive. The car itself just is glued to the road. The suspension absorbs bumps without breaking your back. So it's comfortable, It's the ride is supple, and it's quiet. Well, it's, it's quiet for an affordable compact. Anyway, Honda managed to give you the comfort of the regular Civic with the spice of an SI in one suspension through the magic of active dampers, which stiffen the car up when sport mode is engaged. But sport mode tackles more than the suspension, as it also breathes more life into the steering. That electric power steering unit becomes tighter, more reactive, definitely gains some heft too. Um, and so now I'm really ready to have some fun. And that's where this really shines through because that minimal body roll and those that great suspension in here um, just loves this. And you don't find this very much more, very much in any small cars nowadays. And then I have torque too, which I mean, as much as I love my car, fun to not feel like you're wringing the absolute hell out of the car the whole, all the time when you're, you know, going around a back road. It's 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 nice to just give it some beans and it and then it goes. But despite its competency in both the countryside corners and city streets, there's still something missing. Don't don't get me wrong. It handles great. It is neutral. Uh, it doesn't really oversteer, obviously, because it's front wheel drive. But it resists understeer pretty well too. And then it can power itself out of corners with that limited slip differential, and it pulls you out with it which is cool. And that torque just feels immense, uh, even though it's not, you know, a crazy high number. But combined with that pinpoint steering, you really get the, the notion that Honda paid attention. They tried their best to make a car that just handles the way a car should. But then they got rid of the noise. They got rid of the, the motion from the engine. And it's like, Honda, you did that so well. You did it so well. And, and now it's gone. And you're probably never gonna get it back. Before you label me as a vape-wielding eBay turbo suggesting Honda bro, hear me out. Both the new SI and my 8th gen would get whomped by any Toyota Camry with 3.5 V6 in a race. But the 8th gen engine note was so much more visceral especially with its induction sound. It just felt like you were driving a race car or a crotch rocket, so it really didn't matter how fast you were going. The clutch and shifter also had a little bit more weight behind them and a little bit more communication than the new car that only added to this effect. It's truly an experience. If you still want to dislike this video and comment something about how your modded 10th gen is way better, fine. If you drive a 10th gen by itself or next to its modern competition, You'll find that it's a fun little car, but as someone who's driven a stock 8th gen back to back with a stock 10th gen, I can guarantee you that the new car handles better in every way, but it can't touch the old car when it comes to straight line smiles. Don't believe me? Just listen. I definitely understand why Honda would go with the 1.5 turbo. It's more practical, gets better gas mileage. On a day to day basis, you're going to appreciate that extra torque more than the noise and the power all up at the high end. But there was something about that that was just special, so I need to mention that. Don't get me wrong. I think if you're looking for a small sports sedan that's under $30,000, hell, a small sporty car under thirty thousand dollars. You can look at other stuff, but honestly, I don't. I don't. I'm not sure you're going to get better value at twenty four thousand dollars than a Civic Si. You get the power. You get the great handling. You get 
practicality, it's the total package. The current generation Civic Si might not have the crazy sound or raw powertrain experience of the old model, but it does about everything else better than it used to, and when compared to its competition, you find that it's more dialed in than the Hyundai, more enthusiastic than the Golf, and far more forgiving than the WRX. The new SI represents a different interpretation of daily performance than what we are used to with Honda. And this isn't a bad thing. The SI may have grown up, but still, if you ask it to play, it'll be more than happy to cooperate. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Alright, let's go. Huge shout out to Royal on the East Side for helping make this video happen. Royal on the East Side is a dealership in Bloomington, Indiana. The sales staff are honest and knowledgeable about their product. If you're looking for a new or used car, check them out.